John 3 verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life This is the most misinterpreted scripture in the entire Bible John 3 16 alone has deceived billions of people and more people have been deceived by this verse than any other verse in the entire Bible This is the foundation of Christianity it lies on this verse of telling people that John 3 16 is saying that God loves every single person in the entire earth and that's simply not true at all when you read and study the Bible that's not true so it's the class time right now and it's time to put emotions to the side because this lecture is going to rock some boats understanding the truth is going to be hard for a lot of people to digest but it's time for class and now we're gonna have to put emotions to the side and we're gonna have to use common sense now put religion to the side and we're gonna go on a scholastic level and find out exactly what the Bible is saying what God is saying we're going to have to use ratios nation to break down John 3 16 and after this lesson you're going to find out that this is a very basic scripture when you come into this knowledge John 3 16 is very easy to break down and to find out exactly what it's saying so with that I'm brother Jerusalem this is the Bible unlocked the John 3 16 deception John 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world see now when people see the word world what they automatically do is interpolate and insert their definition of what this word world means they automatically say see this is saying God loves all the people in the world when there are over 16 17 definitions of the word world and in the Bible, it tells you that there's more than one world in the Bible Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 half in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds plural with an s at the end of it telling you that there is more than one world in the Bible so now the next question you have to ask yourself what world is John chapter 3 verse 16 referring to since we know now that there are multiple worlds according to the Bible we need to find out what is talking about and through the process of elimination right now we're going to find out that it cannot be talking about all the inhabitants or all the nations of the world the proof right here Romans chapter 9 verse 13 as it is written Jacob have I love who is Jacob Jacob is the forefather of the nation of Israel Jacob's name was changed to Israel Israel begot twelve sons which became the nation of Israel so when God is saying Jacob have I loved he sang the twelve tribes of Israel have I loved those are the ones that I love but Esau have I hated Esau is Jacob's brother Esau became a nation known as the so that same curse that fell upon Esau that God hated fell upon all his descendants the God says he hated the let's read it again Romans chapter 9 verse 13 as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated there's no way out of this tells you that the word world and John 3 16 cannot possibly be speaking about all the inhabitants of the world it's just not possible because this would be a contradiction you can't have it both ways he can't say he hates one person on the earth and then say in another verse he loves everybody in the world that's a contradiction the Bible doesn't contradict itself man contradicts the Bible so now we're gonna find out what world was it talking about we're gonna I'm gonna give you the specific verse on what world he was referring to when he said God so loved the world Isaiah 45 verse 17 but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everlasting salvation ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end this is the world it was referring to in John chapter 3 verse 16. It was talking about the world of Israel not the world of everyone on the entire planet earth that's not what it was referring to this is this it's pretty much the exact quote that John 3 16 comes from Isaiah 45 and verse 17 that's where Christ was quoting it from everlasting salvation and everlasting life in John 3 16 this is where he got it from so it's not to be confused with God it is talking about all the inhabitants of the earth that do not match up with what the Bible says John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so now we need to find out who did God give his son for who did God give Christ to be a savior for because it says that he gave his only begotten son so now we need to go through the Bible and find out what it says Acts chapter 13 verse 23 of this man's seed hath God according to his promised raised unto Israel a savior Jesus now you're gonna have to ex you're gonna have to accept it or you're gonna have to question what you believe. 
In the Bible clearly says that God gave his son for the nation of Israel there are the ones who they're the only ones who needed a savior not the entire planet earth they needed a savior because they were given a certain law the Israelites never kept that's why we've gotten that's why we're in captivity today we never kept the law and Yahweh who you call Jesus Christ he's the one who needed to be a savior for the nation of Israel for the laws that the nation of Israel never kept so the Bible says he gave his son for Israel this is clear and is easy to be understood once you get your mind out of religion John 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now this is what happens when a mind is stuck in religion when it gets to the whosoever part somebody whose mind is in religion they'll skip everything else that we just went over and they'll go right to the whosoever and then they'll run with it and say see whosoever this is talking about anybody who believeth in Christ can be saved anybody even though we just went over that the Messiah came and the world that God was talking about in John 3:16 was for Israel but that's why the Bible tells you to read it precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little to get the correct understanding the whosoever is easy to be understood we're gonna use common sense right now a lot of people can't use that when it comes to the Bible but we're gonna use it right now and show you that this whosoever cannot be talking about every single person in the world it's not talking about that here's the proof Hebrews 12 and verse 16 lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for you know that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears my question now is does the whosoever apply to Esau the 237 o colon 08 colon 39 comma 120? Greater than 00 colon 08 colon 41 comma 200 the Bible says that God rejected Esau which means his whole lineage got rejected and they found no place of repentance no matter how many tears the nation of Edom drops no matter how many hallelujahs they send up no matter how many amens they throw up they said there's no place of repentance for this nation of people my question to you is does the whosoever apply to them that's what you're going to have to to, to cope with does the whosoever in John 3:16 apply to the nation of Edom absolutely not and I'm going to prove to you that the Bible scholars know the same exact thing see they're not the Bible scholars when they're sitting here breaking down the Bible the same way the Israelites do they're not doing it from a religious perspective they're not God they don't have the influence of the Christian church in their ear determining what the Bible's saying they're breaking it down just like they break down a Shakespeare or anything else so they know exactly what the Bible is saying but they're going to tell you and the Christian church is something totally different because it's meant to be deceptive how do I know that the scholars know here's the proof the Zondervan compact Bible dictionary Edom the nation and its people who were the descendants of Esau Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God now I'm a ask you one more time is the whosoever in John 3:16 talking about everyone the Bible says that Esau has no place of repentance him and his descendants the nation of Edom they have no place of repentance they were promised they were the only people that were promised no mercy at all from God is whosoever talking about them are they included in whosoever not so that tells you that whosoever is not talking about every single body on the planet earth it's simply not saying that when it says whosoever is not an all inclusive statement every time you say whosoever it does not mean you're speaking about everybody in the world an example say you're a classroom teacher and you have a classroom of 30 students and you say you give out a test and you say whoso or you say whoever because whoever and whosoever are the same things this whoever is the modern term for whosoever you say whoever finishes the test first can leave early does that mean you're talking to somebody in the classroom next door or somebody in a classroom in China or somebody in a classroom in Russia know it's about whosoever in that classroom in that environment that's who it's directed to and it's the same thing in the Bible is directed to the Israelites so whosoever in John 3:16 is saying whosoever of Israel I'm going to show you right now that whosoever is not talking about everyone in the Bible Exodus 12 verse 15 seven days shall you eat unleavened bread even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that soul shall be cut off from israel see now you understand what whosoever is talking about whosoever eateth bread his soul shall be cut off from israel this is not speaking about every nation on the earth every nation in the earth can't get cut off from israel israel is its nation it's talking about whosoever in 
Israel eats bread within that time frame that soul is going to be cut off from the nation whosoever is not all inclusive so when John 3:16 says whosoever believeth in him is talking about whosoever of Israel believes in him they're the ones that should not perish because they're the world that God was talking about this is very simple this is not complicated that's why we're breaking it down to the very simplest level Barney style so people can get a correct understanding of what this John 3:16 is referring to now we're going to go up two verses which nobody ever reads people just jump right to John 3:16. How about we start two verses up so we can get context and without a shadow of a doubt you will understand that this is not talking about every single person in the world it's talking about the nation of Israel all you got to do is go two verses up and then read down in context and you'll see exactly what it's saying John chapter 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the Son of Man be lifted up now Christ is given an analogy he's saying the same way that. The serpent was lifted up in the wilderness is the same way that I'm going to be lifted up now in order to understand what he's saying we got to go back to the account in the wilderness and find out who the serpent was lifted up to and find out exactly what he who he's going to be lifted up to because he's given a comparison the same way it happened in the wilderness is the same way is going to happen with me numbers 21 and verse 5 and the people spake against God and against Moses wherefore. Have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water and our soul loatheth this like bread and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died see the Israelites were complaining after coming out of Egypt because it was rough in the wilderness didn't have the luxuries of eating bread whenever they wanted to and it was rough so they started complaining against Moses and against God and the most High sent fiery serpents to bite the Israelites and start putting in the death this is referring to the Israelites, not all people so keep that in mind, therefore. The people came to Moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and thee pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us and Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said unto Moses make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live to see it says everyone that's the same word as whosoever it says everyone that is bitten that looks upon this pole shall live now that everyone. Is that talking about somebody who was living in China at the time or is that talking about every one of Israel this is context people context 101 every one of Israel who looked upon this serpent would live he lifted it and everyone who looked on it would live they'd be revived from the poison that was inside of him see how this is the same replication that Christ was saying that he was gonna do he says the same way that Moses lifted the serpent to the people of Israel in the wilderness is the same way that I have to be lifted to the people of Israel and die on the cross it's the same thing this is the correct context in the Bible it's not speaking about all people that's simply just not what John 3:16 is speaking about it cannot be talking about that because it would be contradicting the entire Bible Revelations chapter 12 verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world you have to ask yourself why is it that Somebody would lie about something as simple as the verse of John 3:16. This is the reason why you always must remember this verse when you hear something contrary from what you've been taught for centuries or decades the traditions of men that have been passed on for centuries and decades you have to remember that the prophecy says that Satan deceived the whole world now this world is talking about every inhabitant of the world because nobody knows who the real Jews are nobody knows that Christianity is a lie nobody knows about what is going on between and in real. Secret societies you got the 1% controlling the 99 of everything of education the medical field of anything you got the 1% that control all of it and they're gonna push lies to you because the whole agenda is to have people mentally enslaved, that is the agenda and Satan is behind all of that and the number one thing is religion so don't be surprised when you always fight when you're constantly finding out something has been a lot you've been lied to about something don't be. Surprised about that just remember Satan pop is the prophecy says Satan would deceive the whole world and that's just the way it is so your job is to snap out of it and to wake up get your mind out of religion, get your mind out of religion that's the that's your job, snap out of it you've been hypnotized with the same stuff that's been pushed on you over and over and over so when somebody comes and tells you the truth it seems like that's a lie well I've been taught this for so long he's even. 
Though this brother is bringing out the truth that's a lie people don't want to hear that people want people are accustomed to hearing the same thing over and over and then a lie becomes the truth and that's exactly what happened to the verse of John 3:16. When you say a lie so many times people keep reciting it and now that's become the standard that is the truth that's become people's reality a lie has become people's reality and that's what has happened that's why it's it's astounding to see the correct breakdown of John 3:16. It's just so far-fetched and different than what you've used to been hearing Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man and if you didn't understand the John 3:16 deception lesson your job is to keep God's commandments and maybe one day he'll give you the understanding but until then you need to keep his commandments understand in John 3:16 that's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven but keeping God's commandments to the best of your ability that's what's going to get you there this is the soul saving business this ain't the entertainment business this ain't to make you feel good business this ain't the let's all get along and hold hands business this is the soul saving industry so your job is to keep God's commandments let's find out what one of God's commandments are that you must keep for your soul to be saved Leviticus 19 and verse 29 do not prostitute the daughter to cause her to be a lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness do not prostitute. Your daughter to cause her to be a what does that say don't be putting on skinny jeans on your daughter with her butt showing all out don't be putting tight t-shirts where you have her breasts hanging all out don't be having her trying to look like Kim Kardashian don't be having her trying to look like the women on Atlanta housewives that's prostituting your daughter to cause her to be a god says you're not supposed to be doing that and the result of not listening to god today what do you have? Hi HIV Rates STDs all over the place women sleeping with a thousand men this is what you have because people don't want to listen to this law people want to teach that the laws are done away why would this law be done away with why would God say it's okay now to prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a and to have her dressing filthy out there involved why would God say that that law is done away with for you people who think that the laws done away with that's what you have to ask yourself most. People never even heard any of the laws and they automatically jumped to the laws of done away with these laws are to save your life and to keep you in good health and good shape and good prosperity with the most high did not to hurt you so you're not suppo you're not to be prostituting your daughter and causing her to be a because the whole land will be full of wickedness and as you see today in America the whole land is full of wickedness I'm brother Islamic prince and until next time I say. Salam asking the viewers to like the video subscribe to the channel and share the videos so that the word can be spread throughout the four corners of the earth as prophesied and with that, I say peace and blessings to the nation of Israel and you.